All right, so let's do 11. Uh, this is Mac history, so that Mac has been through many versions of their file format. They used to have something called a Mac server. It hasn't been around for a long time. But now you have this huge uh, array of Apple devices, the Apple phone, the Apple TV, and so on. Uh, but they're all run in a very similar way. Uh, originally, it was the Macintosh file system, then HFS, the hierarchical file system, then HFS Plus, which is extended, and now it's JHF Plus, and it came after that journaling one, and now it's the Apple file system. This is the new one, a 64-bit file system, and it's really very advanced. Um, it stores the metadata as a B tree, which is a special data structure that makes it easy to search through things quickly. Um, and it, it's a very advanced, very nice file system. Uh, it has strong encryption, and various versions of AES are used to encrypt the data. Uh, it has a lot of layers of encryption and places to store the encryption key. Uh, there's a, a container key bag and a volume encryption key and a uh, key encryption key. There are layers of encryption. And when you write an app, you can uh, talk about when the data should be available, perhaps all the time, perhaps only when the user has logged in, uh, and other times. So iOS has <coughs> backup, which is a big issue. If you turn on iCloud, the data is sent up to Apple's servers, although from what I've heard, they're actually Microsoft servers that Apple has rented, but anyway, servers under Apple's control. And the data there, of course, can be recovered by Apple because the point is if you lose your phone, you can uh, recover your data and put it on the new phone. Therefore, Apple must have the key and therefore they can reply to law enforcement requests for that iCloud data. Now the phone itself is encrypted and if you refuse to open the phone and you don't tell anybody the PIN, uh, then it's very difficult for law enforcement to get in. Their only real option is to pay a third party company like Celebrite to get in, who can hack in. Uh, but for the iCloud, they can get it with just a normal search warrant. Uh, Mac devices have a T2 security chip, which is the equivalent of uh, the trusted platform module on Windows machines. And what this does is it stores the keys in a special storage area that can be easily completely erased. So when you reset your phone to factory defaults, it just erases the effaceable storage of keys. And now all the data on the phone is encrypted, but the key is gone, so it's effectively erased. And this is extremely effective in practice. You can safely restore your phone to factory defaults and sell the phone. And the next person that gets your phone will not be able to get your personal data. This has been verified by forensic analysts. Uh, it's very sensible. All right. Uh, and it's got something called space sharing where multiple files can share the same underlying free space, some kind of trick. They also have had for a while, they compress the data in RAM, which is a pretty good idea. Um, all right. So to do forensic examinations, Spotlight is the feature that can search through a Mac. Um, now this I'd wonder about. They say files moved to the trash and then deleted cannot be recovered. Now I wonder if this is really true. You can, on Windows machines, you cannot technically recover the file in that you can't recover the metadata, but the clusters still have the contents of it. So if it was something like an image, you could still see it. And I suspect that the same thing is true of a Mac, except that all modern Macs pretty much use SSDs, and therefore, probably, anything that's deleted is in fact erased pretty quickly. Anyway, uh, all right, that's nothing. All right, journaling is a feature all modern file systems have, where it keeps track of what it's doing, so that if the system crashes, it can just resume where it left off when you restart it, instead of leaving some fragmentary file partially copied. It makes it much less likely that an operating system crash or a power failure will corrupt the hard drive. DMG images are copies of a file, and a sparse image is one that can grow in size as more files are added. Now in, app, in Windows you have the registry, which is stored in binary files, and it has all the settings to control installed applications. And in Apple it uses plist files. They're binary files, but you can use a PLUtil tool to present the information in a human readable form. And so it, it um, stores all the parameters necessary to control the settings of each application. 
Uh, there's a sleep image file, the same as there is on Windows. So if your machine goes to sleep, it stores what was in RAM. Um, all right, and there's a lot of security features in the Mac operating system. Gatekeeper enforces code signing. So one thing that was amazing, I saw when Apple servers get busy, it takes longer to launch your app. Every single time you launch an app, it has to send the signature of that app up to Apple to decide if it's really an authentic app. And if the Apple servers are busy, your machine will take longer to launch an app, which is pretty amazing. But anyway, that's Gatekeeper. There are, by the way, some simple Gatekeeper bypasses that have been found over the years. There was one a couple years ago. I forget the details, but I think it was so simple that all you had to do was zip something. And uh, when you, if you unzipped it and ran it, then it would, the Gatekeeper would let it go through even if it wasn't properly signed, something simple like that. Uh, File Vault is Apple's encryption tool, which is like Microsoft's BitLocker, very good based on AES, um, very secure. Disk utility is used to manipulate disk volumes. And the keychain is the built-in password manager in iOS. Uh, the main thing I know about the keychain is that it seems to have a lot of defects. Uh, frequently I upgrade an Apple machine and then it constantly keeps asking for a keychain password after that. It's a very annoying defect. Um, then there's an iCloud keychain. And uh, there's Safari, of course. Many people are using Safari, especially on phones. Um, and therefore, you want to go to the browsing history, downloaded files, and cookies, and so on. And they're all stored in these files that are part of the Safari browser, just like every other browser has a way to store this information. You can put a Macintosh computer in target disk mode. And when you do that, it acts like a, a USB connected hard drive, and it makes it very easy to just copy all the data off it. So that's a handy way to do it. And so Mac OS devices, uh, the, I, the iPhone and all the portable devices are very similar to Mac OS computers. It's called iOS, the operating system, and it's very, very similar. Um, all right. So your iPod is, and your iPad and your iPhone have these folders with music and calendars and contacts and so on. Um, there are special softwares people get to image phones. Black Bag was one of the big ones. They've been acquired by Celebrite. And there are many other companies like Oxygen Forensics that make tools to image the iPhone. They tend to be proprietary and expensive and have no free version. Which is why I didn't give you a homework of imaging a phone. I just found an image that was put online by one of these companies to examine for the class. Um, all right. And uh, when you boot up your phone, it uh, executes code from ROM. And this must be signed by Apple. This is the security feature which Microsoft has tried to imitate many times. iPhones are very secure against rootkits. Rootkits are malware that infect the operating system at its fundamental level. But iPhones verify the signature of Apple signed software during boot up. So it is very difficult to get them to run anything that's not approved by Apple. Getting them to do that is called a jailbreak. And there was one of them developed recently by one of my ex-students and there have been others. Um, but you have to find a serious defect in the Apple security to run anything other than a genuine Apple operating system on your iPhone. All right. And we talked about iCloud, which is the main backup solution people use these days. And of course, there is a lot of location data on phones. It pretty much uh, keeps track of your GPS location for many reasons. And you can get that out of there. Uh, in addition to the GPS location, you can get more precise location from the SSIDs of all the wireless networks you've gone near. And those, there are many uh, services that publicly map them, including Wiggle.net, um, that just have a list of the physical location of all the SSIDs pretty much everywhere. And Checkmate and CheckRain are the uh, exploits against the boot ROM, which were discovered by my, my ex-student, uh, Axiom X. Um, and uh, they're considered very uh, important advances in iPhone security so that uh, independent investigators can get at the internals of phones running more modern versions of iOS. Uh, and there's an Apollo tool that pulls out the SQL databases off a phone. And I think the um, tool we're using, this Windows-based tool, Autopsy, is using something similar to this Apollo, although I think it might have a different name. In fact, let me just take a quick look at that. 
I wondered when I saw that about Apollo. There was a name for the iPhone analysis tool we used. And I think it was not Apollo. Should be here. There we are. It is Leap, L-E-A-P-P, -P, iOS Analyzer. I don't quite know how that compares, but it does essentially the same thing. It finds the SQLite databases where the emails and phone calls and everything are stored. So uh, when examining a, a Mac, you can use any of these tools. And the main uh, defect is encryption. If the thing is powered off and you don't have the password, you've got a serious problem getting in. All right. And let's take a look at the next bit here. All right. Then the, there's the Internet of Things. These are all the other devices that are now computerized. Your thermostat, the GPS unit in your car, your light bulbs might be smart light bulbs, and everything is smart. Everything is connected to the Internet now, your cat feeder, just everything. And therefore, all those things have data of what's been going on. And uh, you can, in principle, find the data, although it can require, it can be a lot of work to figure out some way to connect to it and get that data off it. Um, so Shodan is a tool that lets you search for insecure devices um, or devices of any type on the internet. Alexa has audio files. It does record things people are speaking near the Alexa device, and those have been used. Uh, you can get them uh, by subpoena to Amazon. Um, all the Apple Watch and the other fitness devices people wear are, of course, very useful. They record the physical location of people and things like their heart rate. You can tell whether they're exercising and so on. And then all these portable cameras recording everything everywhere. Um, so uh, also police are now, the police cars are now connected to the internet using this thing called cellular vehicle to everything standard. And uh, they have, a, I have a, a screen in the police car so they can look up data about people online as part of their, uh, their when they pull people over and such. Automated plate recognition and many other things. And your car is just full of data stored on all these devices. So uh, there's many ways to do it. And of course, another issue is uh, how to find all these devices. And there are dogs who can sniff the chemicals which come from electronics to find any electronics at a scene. That's another thing you might want to use. So uh, that's it for 11. Let's look at a Kahoot. I guess we got everyone that's coming. So which chip stores encryption keys? That's 
the T2 chip on Macs. APFS is the Apple file system. It's not a chip. All right, what files are similar to Windows registry files? list files. Good. All right. Which feature enforces code signing? Gatekeeper. The keychain is just a password manager. It stores all the passwords. All right. All right. What do police cars use to reach the internet? It's this thing CV2X, cellular to vehicle something or other, I think. All right. All right. Got the winners recorded.